they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear on the. Hi everyone, I'm your host Enrique, and thank you for tuning in to Talk of the Town. Today we've got a very special guest on the show. It's your girl, the Harlem Princess, Vina Love. All right, Vina, thank you so much for coming on. Of course, thank you for having me. Of course. So uh, today we uh, are going to start off with rapid fire questions. So I'm just going to ask you some questions and then you'll give me a rapid fire answer, okay? All right. All right. So what is your favorite color? Pink. Pink? Cool. What are three things you'll take with you on an island, a deserted island, abandoned island? Hmm, that's heavy. Water. Okay, definitely. Um, a map. Okay. Um, and a rag. Okay, nice. No, that's smart. Some people have just been like a studio, speakers. <laughs> Somebody said they'd bring a bait hoodie. So no, what? No, definitely focus on the necessities. I like I that. I can't, I can't. <laughs> what is uh, your favorite food? Uh, chicken. Okay. Period. What, <laughs> what is your, so your favorite album? Mm, Jill Scott. Okay. Yes. Which her, her first album. Her first? Yes. Nice. Good pick. What is your favorite song right now? And it can't be one of yours. <laughs> yeah, I had too um, many people pick their own. So. <laughs> my favorite song right now, I'm not going to lie, is Justin Timberlake. Um, had a song. What's it, what's it called? I never remember the name. That's Why I Love You. Yeah. Justin Timberlake, That's Why I Love You. Okay. What is the last movie you saw? Last movie I saw was, um, damn, what was it called, y'all? We just watched a movie. Um, what happened to it? Damn, that? I can't remember, but it was a Tubi movie. Oh, okay. And I, yo, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I love Tubi. That. Me and my boyfriend love Tubi. And we was watching this movie. It got two versions to it. And the girl looked like Blue Ivy and Ashanti together, like the same <laughs> face, I swear to God. And she bodied it. Like, she became, like, this drug girl and then her best friend and then this and then that. It was a lot. I'm a, yeah, I'm going to get the name of it, and I'm going to send it. They're going to put it right here on the bottom, y'all, so you yeah. can watch it. It's a good movie. <laughs> shout out to Tubi. Fact, shout out to Tubi. Um, so what is one artist that you want to work with that you haven't yet? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily do a song with, but I would love to write with Erica Badu. Ooh. I think that might be kind of crazy. Yeah, no, definitely, especially on the R&B tip. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, be a great song. What is uh, one song of yours you wish got more love? Henny V. Okay, that's. I was actually listening to that on the way here. Mm -hmm. I'm wow, really? It doesn't. Wow, no, that's yeah. a good pick though. I'm surprised that, like more people aren't like tapped in. Yeah. What is uh? Okay, so what show are you currently watching? I don't think I'm watching any shows right now. If yeah, I've I've watched so much stuff mm -hmm. that I'm at a point where I don't know what's good or not. So I don't really. I think I've finished Survival of the Thickest recently on Netflix, which was really good. <laughs> it was a really really good show, and that was like the last thing I watched. That was probably like a month ago. Okay. How, how'd you like it? Is it good? Because I was I trying to watch it. I loved it. Yeah? I loved it. Because, you know, a lot of shows is, is, is a, it's a show. So mm -hmm. it's about the storyline that they put together. But I love when the storyline is so realistic to one woman, yeah. two black women, and then black women in the industry, and then you're trying to be in love, and then you're trying to financially be okay, and then you're trying to have style, and then you're trying to maintain friendships. Mm -hmm. So, like, the show really captured answered all those questions like how do I do this how do I maneuver through all of these things so it was a really good show okay so it kind of sounds like a Netflix version of Insecure almost yeah shorter like more compact yeah like it, Insecure is like what yeah, six seasons yeah. right yes and I love Insecure okay yeah I, I didn't get past the first season but what? I definitely want to tap back in and I was watching it with my girl so you know how that is sometimes it's like can I watch it without you no we'll watch it when I get home and yeah then we don't watch it so I get it I get it <laughs> and then what is uh what's your favorite thing to do in Harlem my favorite thing to do in Harlem, that's tough, because I feel like everything I do is in Harlem. <laughs> I think my favorite thing to do in Harlem would be like those nights when nobody doing nothing and we just chilling and we outside and we just, everybody smoking, drinking, talking, laughing, yeah. talking about stuff from when we was kids. I think that's like my favorite thing to do because nobody really thinking too hard. Like yeah. you're just chilling. It's not about nobody trying to be seen, nobody trying to fit in. Like you really just with your friends, talking, laughing, everybody go home and then that's the end of the night. Nice, yeah, just another night in the neighborhood. Yeah. Nice. And last one is, what is one lesson you've learned in the industry so far? Hmm. Be yourself, because you're going to get criticized no matter who the hell you are, so you might as well just be you and let them criticize that. Mm. You don't want to be known for being somebody else, and that's not even who you are. So now you're battling with 3,000 extra things because it's not even you. Yeah. And you're just like, damn, I wish they knew who I was. But even if they did know who you was, they still going to criticize you anyway, so you could have did that from jump. So yeah, that's bro. definitely my biggest, biggest lesson to be myself. Okay, snaps, because like, no, that's so true. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times people get too caught up in maintain, maintaining this image of themselves. 
that sometimes will cap a little bit. But if you cap too much, mm-hmm. you kind of like don't remember what the truth is, you know? And you know, and nobody's saying like, because, all right, we're in industry, so we have to have an image, mm-hmm. obviously. You have to have a persona. You have to have something that people like. Nobody's saying don't find those things about you that are amazing and blow them up, mm-hmm. but do that. Don't say, mm, I don't really like that, but I'm going to do it anyway just because it's good for my career. Like, no, like that's like the worst thing you could do because the karma comes back from that. So you got to find like those little fire things about yourself and explode them and make them big and make everybody else like them. Mm. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Vina. Of course. All right. That concludes rapid fire questions. So let's get into it. You, um, so for those of you at home who don't know, your uh, your dad is a hip hop legend. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kid Capri. Yes, sir. How um, how did you decide that you wanted to pursue music? Um, well, I was a dancer first. Mm-hmm. I started dancing when I was two. Every form of dancing you could think of, I didn't did it. I didn't went to school for it, studied it, performed it, professionally, all of that. And um, I was always used to being on stage. I didn't know I could sing until I was like double digits. Yeah. So when I realized I could sing. And other people had like the stage fright thing. I didn't really have that. Nice. So I was like, I'm going on stage. Y'all bugging. <laughs> and I would just start singing. I was like, oh, all right. Like I can get into this. And then I went to high school, which was before my art school. So I started to act also. Okay. And I just like just straight up became my life. Like singing, dancing, and acting. Oh, wow. Triple threat. And okay. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> that's just what it was. And I went to one of those schools that ended up being phased out, if you don't know what that means. After the last class that just came in there's no more classes. So oh, the wow. school goes away officially. And um, a lot of my choreographers had left. So I was the last choreographer, so I was so heavy in dance, but I was just like, I want to sing, I want to sing. Mm-hmm. So I would like create all these dances and everybody perform and then I'll come out and sing and then I'll go back and do another dance. And it just became like, just first nature really. And I just fell in love with performing altogether. Nice. So what was it like your first time in the studio, like recording your own music? Terrible. Yeah. I drove, me and my mom, we drove all the way to Delaware. I had to be probably like 12 or 13. We drove all the way to Delaware. And I, if you don't know, if you want to sing, if you don't know, it's completely different than singing like this and singing in a studio. Two different worlds, two different things to explore. I didn't know that. So when I started singing, I was just like, why do I sound like this? Like it drove, I went through this whole emotional episode because I couldn't understand why it sounded like that and it started to play with my like like making me insecure a little bit like can I Mm -hmm. sing for real like am I really good enough but then um you know you readjust you learn some things and um I went back to the studio and I was like okay I know that this is what sounds good on my voice this effect not too much of this not too much of that now in the studio Mm -hmm. I'm a beast can't tell me nothing don't say nothing to me don't talk to me just let me do what I do because that fear that I had from my first session I never wanted to feel that again that fear and embarrassment of not knowing what I was doing I could never go through that again yeah. so now I'm just like too tough in the stool yeah I could imagine that'd be like it's mm-hmm. a really strong motivator yeah never wanting to feel a certain kind of way again mm. so what is your process like now in the studio since you're pretty much seasoned at this point well I mean it depends. Like we, we either go through beats or we make something from scratch or I already have some lyrics that I want to make something to. Um, it really varies on what we're doing for real, but we go through the recording process. We listen, listen, probably mess with it on a mix and end. Might go back, record some things. I might record this on one year and go back to it two years later and now it drops. So it really varies because you just never know what type of mood you're in. Mm, okay. Do you... Um do you, do you usually, I know you mentioned it a little bit, but do you usually go in with lyrics prepared or is it all like a spur of the moment type thing? Spur of the moment. Sometimes I'll have a song from like four years ago and I'll be like, damn, I got to do this song over. And I'll be like, I'll hit Wells. Shout out to Wells, nah, Jason, my whole production team. Shout out to y'all. <clears throat> I'll hit Wells like, yo, I'm going to send you the original song I made four years ago. Make me something to it. And then we'll go on the stool and we'll just try to like figure it out and do it like that. But um. Yeah, it varies. It, it really does. Sometimes I go in there with no lyrics and I don't know what I'm talking about and I won't record nothing. Mm-hmm. We'll sit in the studio for five hours and I'll leave with absolutely nothing. Oh, wow. And then I'll come in the next day and leave with four songs. Oh, so wow. you just don't know. <laughs> you really don't know. Okay. So recently you dropped Around You. Mm-hmm. The single dropped, I think, like, what, two days ago yes. as of us recording it? Mm-hmm. What, uh, what was the process behind that like? Because it's got, like, this, like, tropical <sighs> R&B vibe to it, and I really like it. You know what's so crazy? Like, songs like Henny V and Air, mm-hmm. those are the songs that were, like, so easily made 
with no like extra thought to it. Like it was just like, all right, this is what I want to sound like. This is what it is. Let's reconstruct it, reconstruct it, and then that's it. That was one of those songs. Like I was in the middle of trying to figure out which singles I was about to release for the rest of fourth quarter, mm -hmm. and he played that beat, and I just started singing to it. Like and I was like, all right, I like this. Cool. I didn't know what else to say, so I called my boy Tim. Shout out to Tim Everett, <laughs> songwriter, artist, dope, one of the bros. Um, and he pulled up and like just put some harmonies on, and I was like. All right, bet. And I wrote the words. I was like, from the east side, I'll take you around the world. Okay. Next verse. Threw it on. <sighs> like, it was just so, like, just one, two, three. And then once it was done, we went to the mixing. The mixing was fine. And that was it. Like, one, two, three. I have songs that I've went through so much with that aren't even out. And then the simple ones just be like, okay. take that. So what's the reception been like to the song? Great. A lot of people are just like, oh, I like the softer side of you. I didn't know you had this side. I didn't know you were this, you were that. And I think for me, like, that's the best compliment to hear because I never want to be one of those artists. People always ask me, like, what's your lane? And I can never answer the question because I'm like, I don't have one. So does that mean I'm not an artist? And it's like, nah, like, that's not what we're doing because Rihanna didn't have a lane, but she, she's an artist. She's Rihanna. Very true. So don't ask me that question no more. <laughs> Just listen to what I'm dropping. If it sounds different this time, cool. If it sounds different next time, cool. You either like it or you don't, and I'm going to still keep making music. So it's just about staying versatile, and I love that. That's the feedback that I'm getting. Yeah. Do you have any more songs that hit that tropical vibe, like in the tuck? Yeah, in the tuck, but not that you're going here for the rest of the year. The rest <laughs> of the year, every song you hear is going to be a completely different vibe than the one you heard before. Well, my next song, Catch a Vibe, is kind of, it's not tropical, but mm -hmm. it's, I'm Jamaican, so it got that, it, you know, it got that little, but mm -hmm. it's still a regular R&B song. Okay. What are your, um, uh, when you did, like started writing and like really took like a really strong hand in making your own music, what were some musical influences of yours that you kind of took into that process? It's so crazy. I was into like poetry a lot when I was, a, when I was younger. My grandmother was big on like books and just poetry. So I was really big on like, I listened to things like, before I even understood what the songwriting was, mm -hmm. I understood what scatting was, like those kind of things. Like, -da 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 -da. like I listened to, that's the kind of stuff my grandmother put in my head. Okay. So when it came to the writing part, I was doing poetry and I would have that in my head. So I'm rapping while I'm writing. Like, and I'm like, wait, but I sing though. I'm not a rapper. So now I'm turning it into <laughs> R&B songs from it being like, you know, it was just a complete mix up. But when I got to really understand who was who, I would say people like Mary J. Blige, obviously Jill Scott. Mm -hmm. Um, my mom drilled Mary J. Blige into my head. And it's so many people, man. Like, it's it's hard to even go down that list because I'm going to say, like, Delphonics and, oh, wow. like, Shalimar and, like, you know, all those kind of people. So mm -hmm. it was a lot It was a lot of music stuck in my head and in my little body. So <laughs> can't really pinpoint it for you. Okay. Well, at least you didn't say Michael Jackson. That is, like... <laughs> Shout uh, out to Michael, though. We love Michael. Absolutely. That's, like, everybody's answer, though. Like, yeah. even people you would never expect. Like, we'll have drill rappers up here. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, okay, who's, your, who's like, your musical influence? Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. And you would never expect it just because of, like, the music they make. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's it called? So what about... Have you... You were talking about, like, you would... It would start off as rap in your head. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about, like, stepping into that lane or embracing it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Y'all gonna get a rap song this year, too. Oh, where? <laughs> if you okay. haven't heard me rap, it's a song on YouTube called VV22 that I released on my 22nd birthday, probably, like, four years ago, four or five years ago. And um, it went well when I did it. So I always knew, like, all right, if I did step into this, mm -hmm. I can probably make it do what it do. But I feel like what the rap game is right now is not something to play with. Like, if I was to really, like, tap in, I gotta really, really tap in. Mm. So I'm really, really tapping in. <laughs> and you're gonna hear it on the tape too, so I'm excited. Okay, are there any like, who are you listening to now? Like any contemporaries, like be it R&B or, or rappers? Hmm. I've been listening to a lot of old stuff. That's really, I hear what's going on. Mm. Like I see what's going on. Like I, I know what's out there. I understand what's on the radio. Yeah. Certain songs I like, but it's no artist that I'm like, yo. Like, I'm listening to their thing all day. Like, nah, I'm really, I'm so tapped in with what I'm doing. I feel like I listen to myself more than anybody right now. Mm. So, no, that's really good but time. I love Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my girl. Love Justin Timberlake. I love her. I love SZA. I love, I love all the girls. I love all the girls. There's no girl out that I'm just like, 
Uh, she sucks completely. I'm not feeling like that. So everybody doing what they got to do for themselves. I like it. I think that's the, I think that's the part that I like. Even if I don't like the music, I love that everybody that's out, they doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They're not putting no stipulations on, like, it's just like, this me, take it or leave it. Like, Sexy Red, yeah. love it. Like, I just love it. Go ahead, girl. Like, dude, you're going to be that anyway, so mm -hmm. at least if you're a celebrity, still be that. Like, yeah. don't switch it up. So I just, I love that everybody doing them. Yeah, like, right now especially, I feel like the, the ladies are killing it in mm -hmm. hip hop. I've been on this, like, this really strong run for the past, like, two, three years. Yeah. And honestly... Outdoing a lot of the guys too. Yeah, for sure. It's been a man's world for a long time. Y'all can sit down. <laughs> you can sit down. It's all right. So um, let's take it back a little bit. With your dad being a hip hop legend, what's it like trying to carve your own path while also like not relying on you know like that name? You know, not being like oh I'm Kid Capri's daughter, not using that card mm. and just like carving your own path through the industry. I mean, well, if you know me, I am my daddy's child. <laughs> And I'm also my mama's child, and we don't take too kindly to other people's structure. So if there's something that I want to do, I'm going to do it. And if you in the way, I'm going to just move on around, and I'm going to do what I want to do. So when it came down to, I'm going to listen, I'm going to take heed, I'm going to take the advice, I'm going to do the research, I'm going to gather all the info. However, if my heart is set on it and my mind is set on it, that's just what it is. So even though my dad was Kid, my dad is Kid Capri, it was never like, damn, my dad's Kid Capri, maybe I shouldn't go into the industry. It was never that. Mm -hmm. It was just like, daddy, you supporting me or what? Because this is what it is. Like, it was just always that kind of energy. And in the beginning, my dad was like, no, I don't even think you could sing, no. Oh, wow. And I was just like, word? <laughs> and it just <laughs> turned into, now I'm being in love. And now it's like, you can't even deny it. Like, you can't even be like, I'm not supporting what she's doing because it's like, this is my daughter and she's me. She went around all the obstacles, everything he went through. It, what he was doing wasn't even being done. Mm -hmm. So it's like he had to get up and really make it what it is. He had to really become the greatest. He had to become the Kid Capri. And I feel like in my, on my end, there's no Vina Love. And I have to be Vina Love. If not me, then who? Mm. And it was just like, all right, that's how you feel? All right, bet you got my blessing. And that's just what it is. And my mom, she could just, my mom always been strong about my career. So I feel like even with that, he couldn't even really, he couldn't fight against that. Like, then mm -hmm. her mom would it. Like, her mom really putting the money behind it. She's taking a rehearsal. They traveling and doing this, they doing that. So I was like, I got to support. And once he really tapped in and saw what I was really doing, it was like, I, I didn't have that feeling of like, damn, like, I'm, like, I just didn't have that pressure feeling. I was just doing me. And now we're here. Yeah. No, that's great. Because I feel like so sometimes it's kind of like people will if they have a family member who's like pre-established in the industry and has been like that, they'll kind of just like, just use that as their way to get it, you know? Yeah. But it's really interesting to hear that he wasn't even like that supportive at first. Because yeah. now look at where you are. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like, I feel like my first time ever on stage, mm -hmm. like with my dad was Radio Music City Hall, my seventh birthday. I had on a zebra outfit with a red belt and red boots and my hair. I had the little twist with the curls. I'll never forget it. Ciara performed, LL Cool J performed, Busta Rhyme performed, and my dad performed. And when he performed, I ran on stage and I started dancing. When the show was over, he put me on his shoulders and I was like touching hands, taking pictures. And I feel like that was the moment where I knew like, all right, I like this. No matter what I do, I can take this. Like I could take this part of it. Like it's, it's fuel. Mm -hmm. it, make you, it made me want to dance more. It made me want to go to rehearsal. So I always think back to that moment because it's like when it comes to my dad, I feel like he thinks back on those moments. Like that's what keeps him steady pushing. And if I just let him be my dad and I could just be Vina Love, we could always share those moments. And in those moments are the lessons where I'll get everything I need to know rather than him just saying, don't be in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's a journey, but we shall get through it. <laughs> that's wow. That's such a core memory too. Mm -hmm. I could tell how much that impacted you because you were just like breaking it down to the detail. Yeah. So you've you've known that you wanted to do something in like the performing arts land for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. Then I also wanted to be a lawyer, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> were you um uh, let me ask you something. Like as a kid, did you like to argue a lot? Yes. I grew up with ten boys. Yeah. Oh. And I'm the only girl. <laughs> oh wow. And I'm the baby. No, because you know, 
I, I'm one of those kids too who I used to like to talk a lot, argue mm-hmm. a lot, and I would always hear from everybody, oh, you should be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And like I fake wanted to be a lawyer for mad long too. Yeah. And then I realized everything that went into it. I was like, maybe I don't want to be a lawyer. Yeah. Maybe it was just like everybody telling me I wanted to be I a lawyer. I was with it. Like I was I was with it, but the time when it was time for me to like really go hard with college, mm-hmm. I was going to I started my college now program with John Jay during my senior year of high school. And then um when high school was over, I was like, I'm taking a year off. Like mm-hmm. I just need a minute to figure out what I really want to do. And then when I took a year off, I went back to school, but I went back to school for performing arts. And I kind of said to myself, like, all right, when I have children and they grow up and they go to college and let's say I'm done with my career, I'm a legend now and I'm sitting down, maybe I could go back to school Mm because I'm not a person that want to do nothing. So maybe at some point I will go back to school for it because I really, I do have a love for it. Not so much the argument part, but more so of like just justice period. Like, I will eventually be a judge. Like, it's just certain things that I would want to accomplish. So I would need a certain amount of time, and I don't think I would be able to do that while trying to be an artist at the same time. Yeah, no, that would be trying to do something in, like, the law field and all the work that goes into it while also trying to be an artist and, like, really paving both of those paths. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that'd be really time-consuming. But that'd be pretty cool. Artist turned judge? (laughs) Never seen before, but (laughs) come on now, judge love. That'd be pretty cool. It'd be like a... And then, like, eventually you get to a point where it'd be, like, Judge Judy types? Yeah. yeah that'd be pretty cool. Nah, a rea- <laughs> my own Judge Reality show, that would be so funny. I don't think I'll ever do that, guys. <laughs> but that would be mad funny. No, for real. Um, so, on at the Dean, you actually got a proclamation from the mayor, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, what? How did that, how did that go? <sighs> I don't have words. <laughs> Let's just sit in silence for, like, 30 minutes. Nah, um... <laughs> Honestly, you really think people not watching you, and they really do be watching, and they really do be paying attention to everything you do. I feel like in that moment, the lesson I took from that was like, be careful what you're doing, because everybody's watching. Everybody, like the mayor, like, come on now, bro, like what? Mm -hmm. But it was, it's for philanthropy, um, giving back to the community. Um, I've done toy drives, I've done clothing drives, we've been in and out of schools, in every borough, talking to the kids, performing for the kids, um, just popping out when necessary for anybody in need. Um, and these are things that I've just been raised to do from just my heart. That's just what it is. My grandma been like that. She's been adopting kids my whole life. So it's just always been about giving back. And that's just how I move around in life. But it got noticed and... It was a beautiful moment. Like I was around the people that I cared about. Um, I released the song I cared about, and to be recognized for something like that. And I call myself the Harlem Princess. And I call myself the Harlem Princess because I feel like I deserve that. Mm-hmm. I am a princess, but I am from Harlem, and you're <laughs> gonna get the gully gully ah uh, ah. Uh, but we're gonna still love on each other. We're still gonna. We're still a community. We're still a. So it is about Harlem, but it is about being classy and being able to do things for the people. Mm-hmm. So. Getting that was like, oh, yeah, I'm officially Harlem, Prin- Harlem Princess. Like, it's stamped. Yeah. Like, don't call yourselves that because it's not giving that no more. <laughs> I love the girls and I support y'all. Y'all know that. But there's no other Harlem Princess. It's just me because Mayor Adams says so. <laughs> so, and it's on the paper. So, let's just leave it at that. But it was a big moment. Yeah, no, I could imagine. How am, uh, what made you want to get into the philanthropy? I know you said your, your grandmother was very giving and, like, you mm-hmm. adopted uh, quite a few kids. I didn't so. notice it. I don't think I noticed it. For one, I have a lot of clothes. Okay. And I wear things once and I don't wear them again. Okay. So rather than just, I, we've given stuff back to Salvation Army my whole life, but I just felt like why not make it something closer to home? Like I, li- I did my toy clothing drive in my hood, like on my block. Mm. Like, and I don't live on a block that's like, I live with the elderly. So you got to walk down the block into the park and I did it right there because it's like, it's for us. Like, we don't need promotion. We don't need the camera. I didn't even have cameras there. I didn't even want people to... It's homeless people with their children. Mm -hmm. There's no need for the cameras to be in their face. There's no need. So it really wasn't about getting into philanthropy. It was just like, we doing stuff. We giving the clothes away. We doing X, Y, and Z. It just happens to be an event. And that's just what it is. And people took notice to it, so it became a thing. But it was never intended to be like this big, oh, she's a philanthropist. It was never that. Mm -hmm. 
So it's crazy to see what it's become because now I'm like, oh yeah, philanthropy. Okay, bet. Let's yeah. <laughs> like let's really tap in now. So I'm glad that my grandmother and my mom really instilled that in me and just like, yeah, when you're done with it, pass it down to your cousin. Like it's not over. I pay for that. Give it to the next person. Mm. And as a kid, you think like, damn, that's dirty. Like we sharing clothes. And it's like, nah, like that's what you do. That's what you do in your community. You gotta feed each other, clothe each other, take yeah. care of each other's kids. It takes a village. So that's really where it came from. No, that's awesome because I feel like it's great because it started off like in such a genuine way mm -hmm. and now it's it's sprawled into something that is like really, I mean, shit, you got a, you got a proclamation from the mayor, so it definitely has taken its ways. What is, um, uh, what's, ha, have you done or rather, is there an event that you haven't done that you want to do in the future that's like community focus and based? Honestly, I feel like the things I want to do haven't been done yet and I can't say them on camera because then you're going to steal them. <laughs> so, yes. Okay. And I'm going to bring it to the world and, um. It's going to be big, man. It's going to be big, and it's it's going to feel good. Like, I want people to feel good. I don't want people to just go to an event and be like, yeah, it was cool. Like, I want you to leave, and you know something now. You feel something you never felt before. So that's the kind of events I want to do. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's great, really. Mm -hmm. I love the just, like, just a genuine giving nature and, mm -hmm. like, the energy that it gives off, too. So, like, wow. Thank you for giving back to your community. Of course. <laughs> of course. So, hold on. Sorry. My iPad is just trying to keep myself on track. Let's, um, uh, how about we do another game? Let's do it. All right. So this one is going to be finish the sentence. Okay. And uh, you're going to finish the sentence. <laughs> okay. So the first one is, my friends would say that I am. Mad funny. <laughs> this chapter of my life is called. Hmm. <laughs> the get back. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> the get back. Yes. The most underrated song on my playlist is. Like of my music? Yeah. Well, um, um, yeah, you could do that or music you listen to, whichever you want to do, or one and one. The most underrated song on my playlist is Do You Like by Childish Gambino. Wow. You know that song? Absolutely. I'm Heavy. a huge Childish Gambino fan. What's your favorite album? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I can just tell you certain songs. But in high school, that was my song. Most I definitely. love that song. When, when Because the Internet Dropped, oh my God. See, like, you yeah. took me somewhere else. I don't know. Oh, I don't okay. know that song. Uh, it's the I same know the one that song. has uh, 3005 on it. Still, the, oh, yeah. I remember that album. Yeah, that yes, I do. That shit was a And moment. I saw the Childish Gambino movie with Rihanna, and I was like, this soundtrack to this movie mm -hmm. is insane. So shout out to Childish Gambino. Most definitely. Um, I did that one. Okay. If, <laughs> if you want to impress me. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the <laughs> if you want to impress me. You got to just not do too much. That's impressive to me. Mm. Like, just chilling, and you're just in a space, Yeah. but you're there. Like, people know you're there, but you're not doing nothing. Mm. That's impressive. Okay, so it's like doing a little, but it really means a yeah. lot. Got you. Okay. And, oh, this is, what is a, oh, my bad. I was going to ask it in the form of a question. Mm. <laughs> my favorite song I wrote is? My favorite song I wrote is Air. I'm going to say a song that everybody know. I would say air. Okay. Uh, my biggest turnoff is? People that stink. Mm. That's crazy to me. Nah, for real. That is so crazy <laughs> to me. We are too yeah. old for that. Yeah, you got to use the deodorant with the aluminum in it. Some th I don't know, because everybody got different bodies. Mm -hmm. And you know, certain things work for certain people. Certain okay, things no. don't work yeah, for certain people. <laughs> Some people don't smell good with perfume on. Maybe you're just a deodorant kind of person. Like, But whatever it is, figure it out what it is with your body. And do what you got to do for that, because you do not need to come outside smelling no type of way. You smell crazy, nothing you saying matters. Nothing you saying, nothing you representing, none of it matters, because you're, I'm solely focused on the smell. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Most definitely. It's like, it's kind of crazy how, under, how underrated I feel like. Hygiene is. Yeah, Good absolutely. hygiene, yeah. Because, like, especially, like, in these spaces where, like, you know, somebody in media, I go to these events, sometimes I'll be in a green room with people to, like, speak to an artist. And I'll go into the green room and like, it's not the artist, but there's people in there who mm -hmm. just like stink. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fair, y'all. It's really not fair. Like this is a heart to heart that we have in right here. This is like my serious face. It's not fair. And I feel like y'all need to get it together. We too old. So the same way you look in the mirror and check your fit before you walk out the door, hit one of those mm -hmm. and then come outside. Yeah, check your fits and then your pits. Thank you, thank you. I just came up with that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't want to talk anymore. Check your feet and your fit. <laughs> that needs to be on a t-shirt. Oh, 
Oh shit, that's bad funny. You I did that right on the nail. Just uh, give me that five percent. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the last one is I can't do business with you if. I can't do business with you if you talk too much about everything that don't got nothing to do with the business we're talking about. If you want to tell me about all the business you do with everybody else, how can I do business with you? Mm. I only want to talk about what we're doing. I want to talk about our community of work that we we got going on. Don't come to me and talk to me about your other business ventures. You're now no longer trustworthy. You now talk too much, and that's a problem. You're not a good business person. Mm. Tight lips. Most definitely. All right. Well, Vina, thank you so much. Thank you. What um uh one last thing mm-hmm. with uh, the year wrapping up, we're about to be if we're not already in Q four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what can we expect in the rest of the year? I got singles on top of singles on top of videos on top of videos. So it's gonna be a lot. I'm. Let me not use the word a lot. It's gonna be fulfilling for the rest of fourth quarter. And I feel like I've spent so much time like dropping a song and taking so much time away. And then dropping a song and taking time away. Mm -hmm. The consistency is there. The music is there. I'm excited. And um, that's my favorite part about it. I'm excited. And then the tape is going to drop. And then the album is going to drop. Oh. So I've been holding back all these years. And now it's finally coming out. Like, it's if you've been rocking with me all this time since 2015, Jesus Christ, it's finally here. And yeah, that's how the rest of this year is going to go. Okay. So the tape and the album are coming this year? Not this year. Okay. I'm doing my <laughs> singles for the rest of this year, gotcha. preparing for the tape and the album for next year. So the Hood Marilyn Monroe will be releasing in the beginning of 2024. Okay. And then Love Tour or Love Talk. I'm still back and forth in between the names. <laughs> but the album, that'll be dropping later on in the year. All right. Nice. The rollout is underway. Yes. Nice. Yes. Awesome. Well, Vina, thank you so much again. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell the people where they can find you at? It's your girl, Vina Love, the Harlem Princess. We on Talk of the Town. If you don't know me, now you do. Follow me on the gram, V-I-N-A-L-O-V-E. Get all my singles on all streaming platforms and watch my videos on YouTube and Worldstar. And if you really, really, really want to be in tune with me, turn on your post notifications on your girl so you can get all the tea at all times. And yeah, I love my city. Harlem world.